Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a follow-up video uh, looking at airfoils again. My previous video was uh, looking at ways to get around the, the uh, fact that SolidWorks doesn't allow you to uh, control scale features with global variables. So I will put a link to that video in the description. So this is a follow-up video where I'm looking at creating an equal or equal thickness trailing edge using the same technique that I used in the previous video. So as you can see, I've also added a wingtip because I thought muzzle capped this off. So I worked all right. It's fairly smooth. I'll upload this model uh, so you can pick it apart and have a look how I built it. So what I'm going to focus on is the, uh, the way I've set this up so you can control the trailing edge and end up with trailing edge that if we go measure uh, parallel uh, my setting in my variables is one millimeter um, so it's 0.9949 so close enough okay I'm gonna roll back I uh, probably won't cover too much actually with this first bit of uh, information here because this is uh, covered in the previous video okay so I've got the scale tool set up to build this loft surface set up the same way as last time except you'll see I have got a split line running along the back. Okay, so we're still going, these profiles are going down to a point, but what I'm doing is, if we go in here, so I've got a trailing edge at the root, and I've got a trailing edge at the tip. So what those are, are sketches um, set up. So this is my trailing edge. Uh, I've got a, a global variable to control the trailing edge uh, thickness. So one, it's just a line there and then I've also got one for the wingtip edge and I've then split my control profiles as you can see there I've split it split the surface body and again there and again that's one millimeter okay so you can see what's going to happen here when I go to the loft then I've got that line through there so the next difference is instead of calculating my sections uh, right to the back of the trailing edge we are going to change the sketch so instead of being the measurement here being sampled from our control geometry here so that 250 these are linked instead of that dimension going right to the very back of this uh, to the point of the back of the vertex on the back of the profile there it's going to the trailing edge okay so that means when I run my intersection and then create a plane, a surface plane, I end up with a surface with uh, splits there and there. As you can see, the edge is split. So if I measure that, that's one millimeter. Okay, and now that section is scaled to the wing root control here. So again, you really need to watch the first video to know how I've set this up. Um, so that's moved in place, and now if I make the, the wing midsection, it's the same thing. I've gone back in and I have changed the, the sketch, so my dimension, so this line is dimensioned to that point there. So if you change this dimension, this line just shuffles up and down this, uh, this tool body, and that's how it changes our, the scale of the profile it's generating. And then once I've got the section in place out on the uh, wing assembled in place then I've got a sketch called trailing edge which basically is a it doubles as a scale checker and also as a, a trimmer to trim off this uh, little triangle on the back so this line is coincident to our control geometry down here it's vertical okay so it's got very important you've got to have the vertical constraint there and it is coincident to the end of that line there uh, so if this was throwing an error and it couldn't go vertical so if it was 89.99 by 89.95 degrees uh, that means our scale is out so something's wrong in the setup over here okay and then that sketch there just trims the ends off and then I've done the same thing for the for the wingtip I'll just bring that section up Okay, so I've got my three profiles for my loft. Then the loft is the same as last time. I'm just lofting this through the surface bodies, making sure that the connectors are in the right spot. 
and that's adding our trailing edge in there for us. Okay, and as I did before, I measured. So that's all good, and the parallel, and the other thing you can do, if you select that surface and right click, you'll be able to sketch on it, so that's planar. Uh, so that's all good as well, that's what I'd expect. And the next thing, let's try changing the trailing edge thickness, so if I go in here and I'll just move this over here, so we can see it, that 2mm go OK and that's updated so I don't think that has any implications on the the section of the airfoil because basically what we're doing is we're moving this this line forwards up the section but we're we're doing it in such a way that when we scale the sections the that 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 line so the the smaller the smaller we scale this profile here the more it erodes off the back uh, other thing you can do if you needed to round that out you can add a full round on there and you don't erode the uh, cord of your geometry there of the airfoil because full round it's touching tangent to the three input faces okay i'm just going to reload this um and then i'll just have a a quick run through of the wingtip okay so the wingtip is a little bit more sensitive to uh gross or large changes of the geometry of the airfoil which is not um, surprising because the surfacing is a bit more advanced so what we've done here is create a plane that's through the leading edge and midway up the trailing edge and then I've sketched the wing wing tip plan control with a G2 connection blend on the front and running out to the back and so that's a line there and a few controls there you can change this to make the wing tip sort of blend area bigger or smaller then I've extended out the wing tip or the wing sorry the airfoil and I have then created the trailing edge sort of the end of the wingtip there so that's good dimension on there one then um, I want to trim back because if you just trim this back straight and do a big blend that means you've got this tinsy little surface on the end here which has to have some long flats on it which has to blend out to a big sort of swoopy front which means you're going to get a sort of um, a bit of a nasty area in here where you have a lot of flatness and it's kind of uncontrolled so what I've done is I've decided I'm going to trim the, the top and bottom of the airfoil back using uh, an arc that is uh, normal at the front to the airflow direction so because the top and bottom are different I've had to create some split lines and uh, create a control sketch for the top and bottom and so I split those and then I've split the back of the trailing edge and delete face okay so you can probably see where this is going now why I've done this uh, and then we've got some more control geometry to create a couple of intersecting uh, extrudes here which gives us the I don't know what would you call it the camber line of the end of the wingtip okay so that's using this control up here and then another um, section from the side intersected those into a 3d sketch and then I've created some uh, sections inside this So a number of sections, I'm going to create a boundary surface, four-sided surface, to uh, take up most of the wing, wing tip here. So there's nothing too unusual about that. It's got G2, these splines are all um, degree 5 style splines, and you have curvature continuous connection to the these reference uh, intersection lines from the 
from the uh, airfoil main surface. Uh, and you can see now why I've, instead of uh, running this back straight here and having this big piece of sort of surface that would be uncontrolled, that's why I took this and trimmed it back uh, to match the, the pointiness or how small the back of the wingtip is. Okay, next up I'm going to trim this surface here to be able to leave us with some four-sided um, holes to patch with other boundary surfaces. So first of all I've split this uh, using the control sketch that controls that profile from the side and plan view. So uh, what I'm doing is I've got an arc and a line so I'm trimming this out. I've got another video on this. I might stick the link in there as well. The nose cone video, if anybody's seen that, it's the same technique and I'm doing that on the bottom as well because we, we want to end up with um, four boundaries. One, one, two, three and four so we can put a nice four-sided surface in there. Next up, I've created some control sections to help with the flow of the surface because it was a bit flat just using four boundaries. So this, this is a little bit fiddly. I've created face curves on these surfaces here and these face curves are controlled via their clipped onto the endpoints of the 3D sketch geometry uh, in the prior sketch. So I can I can easily move these 3D sketches around. Like these lines here at the front, I can um, I can up, update that and that line will update. And the nice thing about face curves is, is there are there are ISO ISO palms, ISO curves like in Rhino. So they're a nice way to get the flow of the surface uh, as reference geometry to put some splines in. So SolidWorks was giving me some grief with these 3D sketches trying to create a style spline through here. It wasn't allowing me to add a, even though it was a degree 5 style spline with 6 CVs, it wouldn't allow me to add a curvature continuous constraint between this and the spline. So I came up with plan B which was to extrude those 3D sketches to create edges. So we can re reference these edges here. And then I've created some boundary surfaces. So these boundary surfaces are just uh, direction one. Pick those two edges, curvature continuous constraint on each end. And then we're going to use this resultant edge here as our reference for the main boundary surface. So it's a, yeah, it's not the best way because if you want to change the fullness of this curve, you actually have to go into the boundary surface and change the fullness of the curve here, which isn't ideal, but uh, at least it works. Okay, then I've created one on the bottom, and then the boundary surface. So, yep. Yeah. So that boundary surface has a number of profiles in this direction. So we've got edge, edge, uh, 3D sketch, edge, and edge. And then these two uh, references in this, in this uh, first direction got the tangent influence on 100% to fill this out. Uh, and these ones here, I've just got the tangent influence on zero. These shorter edges. Okay. And then knitted that all in into one piece and solidified it. So if I just hide these and turn off our ends. So the results, it's okay. It's not. I mean, it's not absolutely perfect through here, but I think for this for this video, uh, it's fine. This, the wingtip wasn't really the the point of this exercise. It was more to look at the um, trailing edge. But anyway, I thought I'd better have a go at it. So I'll add. I'll put this file in the description, along with the previous video link to this, and also the nose cone. I've got a couple of old nose cone videos which show you the, the theory behind uh, this sort of trimmed corner technique. All good. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.